I'm bored. Hmm? What? I'm bored. You're bored? Yeah. I'm bored. How are you bored? I don't know. I'm just bored. Have you painted your giant box of shame? Yes. Have you? No. Why don't you do that? Boring. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to edit your video. What's that? Is that pinwheel? Yes. Didn't that come out last week? Yeah, but we're filming this in advance, remember? Meta. So meta. Very meta. So I'm just going to get back to this now. What am I going to do? Uh, why don't you start on your crucible nights? I don't have them here. Have you got them? No. Oh, but I'm going to be editing this video after we filmed it so I can just transition them in now. Now that's meta. Very meta. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we've got some awesome Elden Ring models to paint. We're gonna create a whole scene based around these two Crucible Knights that I've already printed and put together. We have the Flying Crucible Knight. He's got a tad bit of a bendy spear here, but that's okay, we won't worry about that. And we have the Tail Swiping Crucible Knight as well. And I think it's gonna be really cool if we can get some elevation for this guy. We'll create like a little sort of mini diorama base for these guys to go on with some rocks and landscape perhaps. And we'll just kind of make it up as we go along. I don't really have a plan in my head, but we're gonna give it a go and, and kind of see what we end up with. It's another awesome STL designs done by Realstone. I will, of course, again, leave another link in the description so you can go and sub to his Patreon. They do so much cool stuff and you can print your own Elden Ring models. There's so many to choose from. So I'm gonna take these bad boys outside and I'm gonna prime them with some black. So these crucible fellows have the same armor, so we don't need to go through painting how I paint both because I can just replicate one to the other. I will paint the winged one because it has wings and this one doesn't. It's mainly just kind of like a bronzy, brownish, goldy, metallic armor with some sort of bluey fabric around. And then for the wings, because they're they're that sort of like faith, bright, goldy, magic wings. I have no idea how I'm gonna make that, but I guess I'm gonna have to do what I always do and just kind of figure it out and make it up as I go along. I think the first thing to do is we'll focus on getting the sort of like main armor section of it complete. And for that, I've bought some new paint that I wanna test out. And that will be the Gehenna's Gold and some of this Targor Rage Shade. And I'm gonna see how these two work in conjunction with each other. I've also got what other paints I'm gonna sort of try and mix between for the armor. I've got the Gehenna's Gold. I've got the Retributor Armor. I've also got the Rune Lord Brass, which is the sort of like duller tone of the three. And I've also got Fulgurite Copper and Auric Armor Gold, which will sort of be the highlights. The darkest color being the sort of Rune Lord Brass, which is the sort of like dully, dark, deep brown, brassy tone. I'm gonna to use that to base the armor and then we'll start going through the golds to start highlighting them. So we'll just start by dry brushing this rune lord brass on. Cool, that's how he looks with some dry brushing. Nice and easy. What I'll do is I'm gonna move up one more tone. Gehenna's gold. Just gonna use this just to kind of brighten up upper areas. Give a bit of gold and a bit of shimmer to certain areas. Still using very, very little paint on the actual brush itself. I've brushed most of it off. It's quite a cool color. Well, I mean, it's actually quite a warm color, but I think this is a pretty good choice of color to use for the tone of the Crucible Knights, you know? So I'm kind of just focusing this gold on these sort of like most exposed areas that would sort of get the most light reflecting onto them. And all the sort of like little tucked away hidden areas can sort of remain with just the Rune Lord brass. So you get a nice sort of differentiation of tone and saturation. So there we are with some Gehenna's gold applied. And it's looking pretty goldy, pretty shiny, pretty crucible nighty if you ask me. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try out my new shader. I'm just gonna see how it reacts to this gold. Some of this Targor Raid shade. And just gonna apply this shader. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's nice. At the moment it's kind of adding some really sort of deep rich tones to it. I'm not going to apply a huge amount just to sort of see if I need to add more to it. But so far it's adding some cool gloss and sheen whilst also really sort of giving some cool contrast and a bit of deep richer colour too. Yeah that's added some nice richness to the armour. I really like that shader. So the shader has dried and I'm gonna go back over some brighter parts, back again with some Gehenna's Gold. Get some of that nice brighter goldy tone back in. So 
now I'm going to add my main gold colour, which will be the Retributor armour. Now this is a lot more goldy than the other tones, so I just need to be careful I'm not going to overdo it. It's a really, really light application. And I'm not going to go over all of the armour. I'm just going to pick out different points of highlight. Just carefully dot it around. Still just dry brushing. Still the same method. I'm just not covering everything. Cool, so we've got some nice highlights of gold. Parts on the breastplate, sort of under the arm here on the shoulders, on the sort of knee. So that's pretty cool. And I'm probably gonna try out some fulgurite copper. I'm just gonna be careful that I'm not gonna kind of overdo it. It might start to lose its contrast while I'm applying too many layers. So I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping it nice and thin. Not a lot of paint is coming off of this. Cool, yeah, it's really starting to build up. I quite like the mix of these different armor tones. It's sort of like giving it different reflections on the light, which looks quite cool. This will be our final bright one, which is Auric Armor Gold. So I just need to be careful that I haven't got too much on my brush. And that I am only using very thin, dry amounts. I'm going to use this just to dry brush on our brightest highlights. Just being careful that I don't overpower too many areas, you know. Cool. There is our armor. And I think that looks pretty good for the Crucible Knight, you know. So the fabric is kind of darky, bluey kind of tone, and I think Dark Reaper is a good, it's a good base color for this. I'm just gonna get this Dark Reaper over the materials. So we'll let that dry for a second, then we'll apply a second coat of that. So then what I'll do, is I'll just mix a little bit of black in with that Dark Reaper. And I'm gonna be using this mix and applying it to some darker areas just to give us a bit of shadow. Sort of getting that shadow underneath there, see that? We're going from the black up into the Dark Reaper. And I'll just copy that across all the other parts of the material as well. So there we are with our shadows added into the material. Got a good bit of contrast to it as you can see there. So what I'll do to beef up a little bit of highlight to it is I think I'll mix in some Lothan blue into the Dark Reaper just to generate a bit of a brighter blue tone that I can sort of like do a very thin application of to highlight it. So it's about a 50-50 mix of that Lothan blue and the Dark Reaper. There we are with our highlights on the material. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So now let's turn our attention to the antlers. And I'm gonna base these antlers, I'm gonna base it with some more cast bone. And there's the antlers painted in. <coughs> Ooh, yeah. There's the antlers painted in. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab some Seraphim CPR. Just gonna apply it over our antlers to kind of add a bit of shade, a bit of deepening the colors, aging them, weathering them, whatever you wanna call it and then we'll just go back over it with some more more cast bone to brighten up parts, leave the lower parts of the antlers, but we'll just add some more cast bone to the top parts of the antlers to generate some highlight and gradient to them. So what I'm gonna do now, just to finish these antlers off, I'm just gonna dry brush on some long beard gray, which is our nice dry white paint. Yeah, very, very thin layer of it. And I'll just dry brush at the tops here. We should get a nice bit of contrast from the top all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, I think he's looking pretty nice. So I think we can now move on to doing the wings. I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna do it. Maybe I will try a mix of some yellow and orange inks. If it looks shit, we'll just start again. First things first we need to do is we need to mask over our armor so we don't get any paint on it. Might it have been easier to paint the wings first and then done the armor? Yes. I'm not here to make things easy for myself. I'm here to make it as hard for myself as possible. We've now masked them out, so we shouldn't have any problems now doing our airbrushing. So what my plan is, is I think I'm gonna do a overall coat of this orange ink, and then I'll try and brighten it up with some yellows and whites, etc. Right, let's give it a good blast in, shall we? So it's quite cool. I quite like that kind of gradient from this sort of bright orange out into the darker areas. So what I think I might do is I might follow suit with that 
and I'm going to mix in some yellow into this orange ink and I'm going to sort of try and gradient it out a bit. I'm not going to get it exactly as how it looks in game because it's, you know, it's that holy magic kind of thing. But I think just making it look as cool as I can, I think is a good way to go. And I think if I just mix some yellow in, start building up a bit of a gradient and making it sort of like whiter and hotter towards the middle, that could look quite cool. Cool, and with some more yellow mixed into it, I'm gonna start getting that yellow way more into the sort of center now and try and see if I can really brighten this bad boy up. So I've now mixed in some of fluorescent yellow ink into the airbrush. I'm gonna see how that shapes up. So now I've mixed some white into it and we'll see how the white comes out on these wings. I'm just gonna go over it with a bit more yellow. And I'm just going to lastly just boost up this orange again a bit more. Let's unravel this baby and see see how we're looking without the masking tape. That's a pretty cool looking crystal nut. Quite like that. Even though it's not, you know, perfectly in line with how the wings look in the game. I do quite like that kind of like phoenixy wing gradient kind of thing. Looks quite fiery. I think, I think that's pretty cool. So what I need to do now to finish this fella off is I'm gonna go over the spear, do exactly what I did with the armor and the antlers. These little antlers at the tip of the spear, I'll paint the exact same way with the more cast bone, Sarah from Sepia, long beard gray, um, and the shaft of the spear will be in the same colors as the armor. Bosh, there's our crucible knight. He's pretty funky, isn't he? What I'm going to do now is let that dry for a bit and then we'll come back and we're going to make a base. Okay, so making the base. I've got this clipboard, which is quite old. It's quite a good thickness. Um, so I'm thinking I might actually cut into this and create my floor. I'm thinking because this guy's flying, I'm going to sort of create kind of like kind of rocky backing that sort of goes on to a sort of like flagstone floor so he can kind of be up there. My second crucible nut can kind of be on the floor. He can be up here. It'd be quite a nice sort of like dynamic piece. So I think if I make it about four inches by four inches. Yeah, I think that's a good size. And get the old trusty saw out and we're gonna cut into this. Well, after all that, we've basically gone ahead and made ourselves a coaster. <laughs> I feel like I've made it too small. So I'm just gonna cut down on the other end of this. Right, slightly bigger version of the base. Sand it down. Now that we have our base cut, what I'm gonna do is gonna start building up some sort of rocks at the back and start stacking it up so we sort of like get some elevation that he can sort of stand on, which will be cool. I need to mark out how far back we're gonna be so we cannot cross this line. Fortunately, it's actually already cut to a relatively good size. So this is just standard XPS foam that I've used multiple times for different terrains and dioramas and stuff. So I'm just gonna cut into it with my big Stanley knife because I don't have a hot wire cutter yet. So we kind of want to shape this around. I also want it to come down kind of a little bit. So you kind of see that I'm shaping the rock a bit more so it's not as flat. I'm sort of trying to tear it so there are different levels to it and then we can start sticking on a bit more foam and building it out to make it look a bit more interesting. So let's get some PVA and we're going to glue it up. Very cool. So let's get building up a couple more rocks and stuff. Let's flesh this out a tad. Cool, so there's our little rocky landscape. What I'm gonna do is make some flagstones that can go on the bottom here. And then we can have a nice transition from sort of a nice path up into the rocky landscape. So I'm just gonna cut it out of the leftover foam that we have. Right, there we go. There's our little terrain. Just gonna let all that PVA glue dry for a bit. I'm gonna pop it over there. And I'm gonna make some rocks out of plaster. Got this mold for rocks. Got this plaster mix here. I'm just 
give this a good old mix around. Okie dokie. Now, nice and gently, get our plaster mix in the mould. Probably need to make a bit more, I reckon. Careful. Careful. So now we can just let that dry. So we can do a little swap a -roo. What we need to do is modge podge the sh** out of this. So using some Mod Podge, it's going to act as a sort of sealant for our foam so that when we come to prime and paint it, it's not going to fall apart or break or disintegrate. Fantastic. Now we can just let that Mod Podge dry. And by the time that's dried, the plaster rocks will be dried and we can piece them together and then let them all dry together. Well, I can safely say that I think everything's dried. So let's get our rocks out of this mold. So obviously they're a bit big at the moment. You can break them apart, which is nice. So there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just kind of dotting around these rocks, just in places I see fit, really. So there's all my rocks layered up. Pretty cool. And I'm just going to grab some. I've got some of this mixed filler. And just going to kind of use it to fill in gaps. Well, there we go. There is our base rocked up, looking very rocky. And all that's left to do is let this filler dry overnight, and then we'll come back to it tomorrow and prime it up. Good morning, everyone. It's a new day, the filler has dried, the plaster rocks have dried, and first thing I did when I woke up this morning, I took this outside and I primed the foam parts, and I left as much of the rock sort of untouched as possible. And I'm gonna kinda just try and speckle and wash and just sort of dab on these colors, just all around the rocks. So I'm just gonna start with this darker brown tone, and then I'll move up into the lighter tone. I'm now gonna move up and do the lighter yellowy tone. And it usually looks pretty crap about now and you just have to trust the process because when we add the black wash it will tie all this together and make it look a lot better. You've just got to make it look sh** to begin with to make it look better. So I'm kind of just stabbing and stippling this yellow around letting it sort of wash and fall into all the crevices trying to make it look as non-uniform as possible Cool, that's coming together relatively good. So we'll wait for that to dry for a second and then we can apply our black wash over it. Right, let's do our black wash over it, see how it's gonna tie it all together. Getting somewhere. So let's just let that black wash dry for a bit. Our washes have dried, mostly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do some highlighting with my drawn stone and my long beard grey. I've got a big old wide dry brush to do that with. And I'm gonna kind of just go around and highlight these rocks. Okay, now we should leave that to dry for another bit. Here's our base, looking pretty basic. So I'm just gonna start decorating it with some flocking and some grass and some stuff like that. So I'm just gonna dot around areas with some PVA glue. Just where I'm gonna build up some grassy knolls. Okay, let's work with this area to begin with. So I'm gonna work with some of the deep green flock that I've got already. And I'll mix in some of this burnt grass that I've got as well, which is slightly yellower tinge. Just kind of mix up these colours a bit and I'll move up, start adding some to the top here. I'll probably work some more of this burnt grass towards the top. I've got a bit more of this sort of yellowy turf, which would be quite good for that sort of like real burnt, dried up grass that can go towards the top. So I'm just gonna grab some of these like gamer turf things and kind of stick them in underneath these rocks. Mix in kind of some of these more dead ones as well. And then I can use some of this shrubbery that I've got in different colors as well. Where you just kind of try and build up this bit of nature. I 
Right, peeps. This is our beautiful base. Looks pretty cool. And that's what our crucible nights are going to stand on. Right, so it has dried, which means we can get our boy stuck on. So here we have my little, my little tail swipe boy. Painted him up using the exact same methods that I did with the flying chappy. So let's get this bad boy stuck on first. And this guy, I've been coming in hot like that. And here we go. Look at that son of a bitch. That's turned out pretty cool, I reckon. I quite like how this one's come out. Yeah, I quite enjoyed painting the Crucible Knights. I really enjoyed doing this rocky terrain, kind of like a mini diorama kind of thing. I quite like that. So thank you so much for joining. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I tried to make it a little bit more interesting with a couple extra little bits to do. Um, if you did enjoy it, please, if you could be so kind to hit that like button, drop a comment below, and if you were so inclined, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really does help the channel grow. Saying all of that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week, and I think the only thing left to do is take a couple of close-ups of these fellas, so let's roll that. <laughs>